everybody, and welcome to a special edition of Bite This. Our special guest co-host, who's been a co-host many times before on Bite This, Tommy Dreamer. It's a pleasure what to have up, you. my friend? How well, are you? What did you do with the, uh, Josh today? I got rid of that little piece of crap. I sent him back to where he came from. The internet hates him. I hate him. You hate him. Everybody here hates him. Bradshaw hates him. We got rid of him this week. Yeah, very good. So you didn't bring Unfortunately, he's going to be back here next oh, week. I'm sorry. Man! Can we make it where you make another special appearance and maybe... Uh, Bring your Kindle stick. If the internet wants me to bring my and cane, have a caning live on the internet next week, I will cane the crap out of that little punk next week. I promise you. I know everybody back there wants you to cane them. I got a lot crap of crap on frustration about wrestling, and especially if Josh is my problem. Very good. We have a very special bite this today. Our guest, Kurt Angle, and another special gentleman who, uh, a uh, very good friend of mine, as well as my former manager, Jim Cornette, will be joining us a little bit later this afternoon. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? It was pretty good. Uh, I didn't eat a lot, which is rare for me. Yeah. And uh, I had a nice little quiet time with the family. It was good stuff. Always nice, man. How are things uh, on the Raw side of things? Raw is excellent. We're uh, traveling everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're, uh, we just did a Detroit to Seattle to Salt Lake City loop. Last oh. week we are in West Coast, and we're back on the West Coast this week. We're traveling, we're doing it, we, we do it raw. Of course, tomorrow you'll be in Billings, Montana, and from there you go to Loveland, Colorado. And, I will uh, be there. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to be there on Sunday. I don't know who I'm going to be wrestling. Card subject change should say Tommy Dreamer spot because he never knows what the hell he's doing. And then we'll be in Cali on uh, Monday. Monday. West Coast sure. again, huh? I love it. Well, one guy who always knows what he's doing is uh, on the phone with us right now, Draz, adding his two cents. How you doing today? Hanging in there, guys. How's it going? You know, Hello, it's going Draws. great because Josh isn't here. We have Tommy Dreamer yeah. this week, Draws. I heard. Tommy was talking about knowing what he's doing. I didn't think he ever knew what he was doing, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, it's it's really uh, deceiving when he has that Kendo stick in his hand and he cracks it across your back, as I'm sure you've felt many times, huh? Uh, there are Kendo sticks in my back do not go hand in hand. I hate those things. Very nice. How was oh. your Thanksgiving? Actually, it was pretty good. I had a good time. Uh had my parents out here, had a friend out here, and uh, had a very entertaining time. And, and you guys, how was your Thanksgiving? My, mine was, <coughs> excuse me, mine was great. I didn't gain Sorry, any weight, so it's good. Oh, well, that's definitely a good thing, Tom. Uh Dreamer killed the turkey with his kendo stick, I think, and uh, <laughs> cooked it himself. It was very Aww. good. Hey, hey Draws, uh, how is the rehab going? Actually, it's going quite well. Uh, you know, I didn't get to go, of course, I didn't get to talk to you guys last week, you know, the week before... Uh, you know, my triceps have kind of started to kick in, and, uh, you know, they're getting stronger and stronger every day, which is good. And, uh, you know, I've had a little little, little movement in my in my thumb. Just every now and again, we can find some trace movements. And, uh, you know, I'm getting stronger and getting a little more flexible. So things are going well right now. Standing. Yeah, very good. It's always uh, good to hear that you're, you're at least getting some different sensations going on. Um, we understand, too, that you've been interviewed recently uh, by someone from the SmackDown, the new SmackDown magazine. Anything uh, you can tell us about that? Well, just kind of, you know, checking up and updating on things that have been going on uh, since the last time. It's been a couple of years, I guess, since, you know, I would spoken at one of the magazines. And, you know, just, just kind of did a little update there. And I'm actually looking forward to uh, a while ago Confidential had, uh, spoken to me about doing some things that I've, I've been real I, I've been wanting to for so long to do that and I'm looking forward to the chance once I get out of here I think to uh, hopefully do a confidential piece so you know people can see me again and uh, you know I could do a little talk in there to let people know what's going on very cool uh, did you get a chance to see Raw this past Monday yes I did yes I did Mick Foley returning uh, had to make you uh, feel something huh I love seeing Mick out there. I mean, and of course the fans do also. But uh, you know, it's great to see him back in the mix. And you know, when with Austin out, uh, it, it was only appropriate. And you know, what a fan reaction, and what you know, what a reaction I had because you know, like I said, I've always loved Mick as a wrestler, as a person. And uh, when he's out there, when he's on the mic, it's just you never know what's going to happen. But you're always looking forward to see what comes next. I agree wholeheartedly. I'm a huge supporter of Mick Foley, and I think he adds so much to every time he's on the show, and whether it's comedy or violence or, I mean, he's so articulate, and he just he brings to me what Raw 
and all television shows should be about is human emotion. And he definitely garners that. Whatever he does, he does it to the best capacity that he can. And I love that the sock went down Eric Bischoff's throat on Monday. <laughs> well, I think you guys are brothers in hardcore either yes, way you are. slice it. You were it. there too, Dr. Yes, Tom. I sure was, man. I just wasn't as hardcore as you guys. Draws, I got to tell you, though, I think it was an unexpected pleasure to see Mick Foley come out and, and make the firings, uh, so-called firings, uh, he did during the show. But at the end of it, obviously, we, uh, we saw that th that was just a way to show Eric Bischoff what a complete ass he's been. Uh, but we also saw one of the main issues take place when Mick Foley handed out a petition, Tommy, yeah. Yeah, to, to Lillian Garcia. And we understand that over 500,000 people wow. have signed that petition so far, Draws. I mean, you can even sign up online. You know what? That, and I'd say it's unbelievable, but it's really not. When you think about the every everything that... that he that he's done for the business. I mean, it's not an unbelievable thought, and I'm sure when it's finally said and done, I mean that that petition is going to have millions of signatures on it. Yeah, and that's no, going to be a great thing. No doubt about it. Uh, your thoughts on Armageddon so far? We have a uh, three-way world championship match between Goldberg, Triple H, and Kane. Well, you know, I'm 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 a I've become a big Goldberg fan, and you know, I honestly back in the day. You know, when he's, I never thought I'd say that, but I've become a very big Goldberg fan. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing these, these, these three guys in the ring. And Kane, you know, that, that's the one thing about Kane that's always, you know, is that he always keeps everybody in suspense. Because you never know. I think you basically see him come out there, and you know one thing, he's going to try to wreck somebody and put them down. And, you know, that's the one thing he will always do. He will bring everything and try to put people down and keep them down. You know, Tommy, it's, it's uh, also been interesting to watch a young man like Randy Orton come into the fold, come into World Wrestling Entertainment, and get hooked up with guys like Ric Flair and Triple H and pretty much lead this guy. Uh, a guy, this guy has really actually followed the business his whole life. He's been in the business his whole life uh, through his grandfather and his father. Uh, both you guys, uh, Tommy and Draws, I, I got to ask you, Looking at Randy Orton's credentials so far, going against Shawn Michaels at Armageddon, do you think that uh, the legend killer will follow through and destroy Shawn Michaels? What about you, Tommy? Well, first of all, I don't mean to correct you, but he uh, already wrestled uh, Shawn. He's I knew facing that. Rob Van Dam. That's what I said for the Intercontinental and, uh, Championship. Batista is facing. Where's Josh? Batista is facing Shawn Michaels. And Shawn Michaels will have probably, as always, the Showstopper will have probably one of the better matches uh, than we've seen Batista get highlighted. Draj, you okay over there? I heard some yelling. Oh, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I'm actually in the, in the therapy room right now. That's okay. I'm listening in here. And Randy Orton, the yes. legend killer, has so deservingly earned that praise. Hey, he defeated me. I was an ECW legend. He's defeated a lot of people. He even gave that TK, uh, RKO to, what's his name, Mark Cuban. It was awesome. Oh, that guy. And, uh, but I'm a big fan of Rob Van Dam's. It's going to be a great match. Uh, I don't know who to call. And I also like to go on the record and support my friend Draws and say I, too, have become a big fan of Goldberg. I love his ring entrance. I love his intensity that he brings to the ring. And now if you think about it, with Mick Foley, we have Mick Foley, hopefully Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, Triple H, so many legends of this industry are all on one show. It's a must-see each and every week. And I'm not just pushing the show because I'm employed by it. I'm pushing the show because I'm a wrestling fan. I'm a fan of this. I grew up watching this. And it's, it's an amazing time right now in the industry, I feel personally, on Raw. And I'm happy to be a part of it. Even though I'm on Heat a lot and I'm not on Raw that much, but I still love sitting there and being in the back because this is what I love to do. And I love everybody. I love what? you. Thank I you. hate Josh, though. So do I. Straws, <laughs> Straws, what I was really getting at, guess, Yeah, what I was getting at, even, even though I, I had the names right, I did have the matches wrong. Thank you, Tommy, for That's why that I'm up. here. That's why yes, I'm your sir, color that man. that is why you're here. Uh, Randy Orton has really shown uh, that, this, that he's for real. And I think going after the Intercontinental Championship at Armageddon um, is, is going to be one of those moments in time that might be very defining in his career. Would you agree? Oh, it definitely will be. I mean, you know, like Tommy was saying, Rob is, you know, he's an unbelievable athlete. He will put on a spectacular show. 
and not that Randy won't, but, you know, Randy's still up here, as he says, a legend killer. Rob is a legend. Rob is definitely a legend in this business. And you know what? I think it might be Orange time to hold the strap and hold the high IC belt. And, you know, everybody sees big, big things for this kid, and, and he is. He's a kid. But he's been brought up and trained and schooled by the best. I mean, being, you know, being with evolution. So I, I see him coming out on top. I really do. I see him walking away with the belt. Well, let's talk about Batista. Let's, uh, again, going against Shawn Michaels, uh, another man who has really made his name in world wrestling entertainment and uh, who has been the icon of so many younger uh, competitors coming in world wrestling entertainment. Now Batista is is being thrust into that spot, and Shawn Michaels is really going to have his hands full. But do you think that uh, HBK can pull it out? You know what? I I definitely see Shawn pulling this one out. He he, you know, as we talk about legends, he is you know one of the premier legends in the business. And you know, like Tommy said, he will put on an unbelievable show and probably one of the best matches of the night, no matter who he's going to wrestle. It'll always end up that way. He will bring out the best in anybody that he wrestles. And wrestling Batista, who's a monster of a man, and, you know, has shown everybody, you know, since he's been back, you know, for, for this for quite a while now for his tricep surgery, that he is ready to step up and be noticed and, you know, to show people what he can do. But I just think Sean is just going to have too, even though the size and strength of Batista, I think Sean is just going to have too much for him. And in the end, Sean will come out on top. And he's going to be battered and bruised and bloody, but he'll come out on top. I agree wholeheartedly. Well, no doubt about it. Tonight on SmackDown Draws, we have a match between Chris Benoit and John Cena, the winner being the number one contender for Brock Lesnar's WWE Championship. Uh, Got to ask you, it, it, Brock said he's going to be in one corner tonight, somebody's corner, either Benoit or Cena. Uh, how would you see Brock calling this one? I see him heading right to Benoit's corner. I don't see him heading to Cena's. And you know what's killing me out here, Doc? Two weeks ago, in my room, I no longer get snacked down. UPN disappeared off my station. They're killing me. Yeah, but you can still watch Heat and you can still watch Raw, right? Oh, yeah. I, oh, I can still watch Roy. I can still watch, yeah, I can still watch all the other shows, and I can also get on WWE.com oh. and see what's going on, which I do. Right. And that keeps me in the loop, basically. Well, we'll have to send you the tapes of SmackDown, but at least you can watch Tommy Dreamer every Sunday night on Heat. And uh, <laughs> you, you'll be on Raw, Tommy. One day I will. You mean no. Tommy has Heat or he's on Heat? Oh, no, no, no. Probably no. a little both, but who cares? Who cares? Hey, man, right. you're not doing it right if you don't have a little Heat. <laughs> you're not kidding, but he's here on Bite This today, and I'm happy just because Josh isn't. Draws, we're going to let you go back to your therapy, man. Thanks for joining us again this week, and uh, take care. I'll be talking to you. All right, guys. You take care. Take be good. Care, Draws. See you later. Bye. You know, it, it's one of those things that uh, you think about, and as you said, Tommy, it is an exciting time to be backstage, obviously, because you're there every week, and you get to feel the excitement, be, be a part of it, and, and taste it, so to speak. Um, do you notice the difference uh, in, in the Raw locker room lately with, with all the things happening with Austin leaving the show and, and uh, the excitement with Mick Foley coming back? Uh, definitely. When Steve uh, left, it was kind of like, where do we go from here? And then we got shocked and surprised by seeing Mick Foley walking in and wearing a suit nonetheless. Yeah. That man just wears sweats more than I do. Right. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great time. It, it really is. And the stakes have definitely been raised. The bar has been raised, to quote the term, and it's it's a really cool time right now as a wrestling fan and as a someone to be fortunate enough to be on Raw. It's the atmosphere is great. You know, we between the women, we just had a steel cage match first time ever. The girls, yes, Raw Roulette, Victoria, Lita, Trish, everyone. Victoria's going to be here next week. I heard. Is that true? Interesting. Anybody? Well, I, yes. I think that is true. She yes. is going to yes. be here Hi. in studio live yes. wearing a hot, sexy outfit. Thank you, Matt Rat. We invite your calls, please, uh, to bite this at 1-888-LIVE-WWE. And on the phone right now, we have our first guest, Kurt Angle. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Very good. You're here with Dr. Tom and, of course, Tommy Dreamer. Hello, Kurt. Tommy Dreamer. How, you How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Dr. Tom, I just got off the phone. With your brother Bruce, he oh. says hi. Are you there? Yeah, your brother Bruce said hi. Oh, very good. Uh, his voice is getting a lot better, I see. Yes, it is. Yeah, I've it talked is. to him. Hey, uh, how is your neck feeling? How are you doing these days? I feel pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm really antsy about getting back. Uh, obviously, the doctor 
uh, won't clear me until about mid-January. Um, you know, this is something that kind of a freak accident. Uh, I got hit in the head with a chair, and you know, risking the what, what my neck is already, already I've already had uh, a broken neck, and obviously uh, seven years later I had another neck surgery. Uh, you know, taking a chance with a chair shot uh, wasn't the smartest thing in the world, especially with a guy like Brock Lesnar swinging it. So uh, it set me back a little bit, but not for very long. Kurt, yeah. uh, I'm reading this sheet here, and it said, how's the blood clot? I didn't even know you had one. Oh, yeah. I had a blood clot almost the size of an orange on, on my neck. Uh, I guess I had a reaction to the surgery, and... Uh, at one point, I had to rush to the hospital because I couldn't breathe. Really? And, uh, yeah, yeah, it got pretty bad. So, uh, did you go to the same doctor? It. Yeah, I went to the same doctor. Um, it wasn't anything that he did wrong. It just that my body reacted to it and uh, uh, to the surgery. And before I knew it, I swelled up so big I I didn't know what to do. But uh, it's down now. It's almost gone. So thank God, it's been about about nine days, but it finally uh, went down to almost zero now. So I'm feeling a lot better. Well, yeah, you know, God. yeah, no kidding. It, it's, it's, to me, it's got to be, uh, I can't even imagine the feeling what it would be like for you to get back in the ring after having any kind of neck surgery whatsoever uh, between you, Austin, Benoit, uh, Holly, go, the list goes on and on. Uh, but stepping in the ring, did you have any apprehension whatsoever, Kurt, at, at the beginning? Uh, and has this changed? The way you think about getting in the ring now, I mean, are you going to be a little more apprehensive, I guess, next time? Well, Tom, it, it's uh, it's hard to say. I, uh, I've always stepped in the ring fearless. Um, I'm always aware of what's going on, and I, obviously I don't want to get re-injured, but uh, I don't have any other way but to go full tilt. Um, All right. I'll be smarter about my decisions. Obviously, um, you know, chair shots aren't uh, necessarily going to be in my, uh, in my you know, something that I'm going to do uh, in, in the future, uh, I think the fans would very much appreciate to see me uh, wrestling in the ring than sitting out for a month, two months uh, with an injury. So I'd rather be in there going at a full tilt, but um, I'm here to wrestle, you know, right. and and that, that that's my background, and that, that's what I want to give the people. When I have matches with Chris Benoit or, or Eddie Guerrero or Brock Lesnar, uh, people appreciate it because of my wrestling, not because I throw chair shots or I take chair shots. So. Uh, I doubt it very much if you're going to see Kurt Angle take another chair shot any time in the near future. Kurt, I'll take him for you any time you want. Just <laughs> use Dreamer you as a <laughs> test crash dummy. I'll take him. I'm brain dead to begin with, so it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> body double. We'll just put you in there. Very nice. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Have you seen my body and yours? Uh, I don't think it would fit, but it's okay. I'm reading my paper again, and it says, We understand you recently had a lengthy conversation with Bret Hart. How did that go? Uh, well, I put the... I put the uh, word out to Bret Hart that I wanted to wrestle him at WrestleMania. Oh, I, I, I an open challenge, that, uh, I see. <laughs> I felt that, you know, Bret, uh, in my mind, uh, was probably, the, without a doubt, I think he was the best wrestler um, that I've ever seen, watching film of him and uh, knowing what he did and what he accomplished. Uh, I felt that WrestleMania 20 would be the perfect time to have the best wrestler today go against the best wrestler of the 90s if not in history. So uh, I put it out there, and uh, uh, unfortunately, Brett, uh, he, he was very excited. Uh, he was very honored, but um, he just uh, doesn't think he can wrestle anymore. He has a lot of uh, migraine headaches, uh, things that he, things he can't do now that he could do before. And he, I don't think, because he can't give 100%, I don't think he'd want to go in there at 70%, and that's Brett Hart. That's me, too. I wouldn't want to give 70% if I can't give 100 I agree. I'll face you. I'm a local. I live in the New York area. I'll go to the Garden. I'll face you. No problem. I'm not the best, and you'll probably beat me like in three minutes, but hell, I was at the first one. I might as well 20 years later get a chance to wrestle at WrestleMania. Why not? Hey, as long, hey if you bring a candlestick, anything can happen, Tommy. <laughs> no kidding. Any, uh, any ideas or anybody that you would really rather face at uh, WrestleMania? Uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk of... Uh, of doing many different things, uh, you know, uh, I thought about uh, probably one of the best uh, wrestlers of all time, wrestler slash entertainers of all time, is Ric Flair. Um, you know, maybe going up against Rick, uh, uh, maybe uh, perhaps bringing someone in from the outside, like uh, an Ultimate Fighting Champion, actually doing a real shoot fight competition. 
uh, you know, I, I'd love to do these kind of things. These are kind of ideas that have been floating around, and uh, I don't necessarily, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting any, I'm not going to say no to anything. I'm going to see what I have in front of me. Uh, hopefully, it'll be something great because WrestleMania 20, that's only going to happen once. And uh, you know, right now, uh, when I come back, I'll, I'm pretty much peaking right now, and I'd really like to uh, put on the best performance possible with the best opponent. I agree, well, and I've always said it, and I said it to Kurt, and I'll say it again. Kurt Angle is probably the best wrestler that the WWE has. He's an amazing performer. He has a great match with Rey Mysterio, and then goes out the next night and has a great match with the Big Show. He's an amazing, amazing person, and I really, he, he's, I always tell him he was the, the best athlete in the business today, and Edge was the uh, MVP of SmackDown, and they both went out and they're hurt, so now they're both going to come back and probably tear it up. And even if you're 80%, you're still going to be better than half the guys out there. So I can't wait to see you. Thanks, Tommy. And I, 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 I put it. I put the, I put the word out to Edge. Heck, him and I have had some classics. So you never know what's going to happen. It's well, WrestleMania 20. I can't wait. New York City. I was there for the first one as a fan, and I'll probably watch it in the back again as a fan. <laughs> But I'll still have a great time. Well, I could always get on live heat. Maybe that'll sure. happen. Sure. Yeah, that'll but work. <laughs> it'll be an amazing, amazing time, and just the whole city's a buzz. It's sold out. I'm going to be scalping tickets. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time. Outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, why don't we jump on the phones right now? We have Joey. Joey, you're on the phone with Kurt Angle. Go ahead. Hi, Kurt. How uh, you doing? I'd just like to say I'm one of your biggest fans, and I'd like to know: Do you think that? The match that you had against Chris Benoit at the Royal Rumble was one of your greatest matches ever. I think, uh, you know, I never watched wrestling before I entered the WWE, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I was too preoccupied training for the Olympics since I was literally six years old. So I, n I never really sat back and watched wrestling, but I've watched so many films. And I do have to say that when I sit back and watch that match with Chris Benoit, I really honestly don't see any other match in history of WWE that was better than that. And I'm not giving credit to myself. I give more credit to Chris Benoit. I think he's one of the greatest wrestlers in history. Uh, I think he's right up there with Bret Hart. I think he's right up there with Ric Flair. He's a great technician, and he's one of those guys that no matter who he's faced, he has a tremendous match. And uh, I'd love, man, I'd love to wrestle him at WrestleMania, but I don't think it will happen. Well, you never know. As we say, anything can happen in World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, but, Kurt, you know, it has been said, and by the way, Joey, uh, is that the only question you had? That's very, okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Thanks. Uh, uh, I would have to say that you, what you just said about Chris Benoit, others on the roster have said the very same thing about you. You've come so far in the uh, short amount of time, really, uh, you've been involved with World Wrestling Entertainment. You have become pretty much a ring general uh, and a dressing room leader, if you will. And how would, you, how would you accept that role? I mean, do you see that uh, as something that you uh, pretty much just fell into? Um, well, you know, the, the reason why I'm such a good ring general now and why I'm such a good leader is I was such a great follower. Um, I, when I started, I was fortunate enough to wrestle guys like Chris Benoit and J Chris Jericho uh, at the beginning of my career. Um, then I went on to The Rock and Triple H and Stone Cold. Um, I've always been surrounded by great wrestlers, uh, great leaders, and all I did was followed, listened, uh, and I picked up very quickly. And uh, because of them, and I give them a lot of credit, uh, i become that much better of a wrestler. So I give a lot of credit to those guys to why I am the leader today and why I feel that I am one of the best wrestlers. And uh, without them, I don't think I'd be where I am because those guys are the main event guys, and those guys have taught me what I know. And uh, all I did was soaked it up like a sponge. Oh, very good, man. Uh, let's go to some e emails uh, real quick, Kurt. We have an email from Jake of, is that uh, Pocatello, Indiana? What is that? Pocatello, Idaho? Uh, whatever it is, Kurt. Uh, he wants to know, what are your opinions of the two participants in the number one contenders match on SmackDown tonight, Chris Benoit and John Cena? We already heard what you said about Benoit, but what about Cena? Oh, John Cena, he's another guy. Um is he a tactical wrestler? No, but John Cena is a very dangerous individual. Um, I wrestled him at No Mercy. Uh, we had a tremendous match. Um, he's one of those guys right now. He, he's just starting to rise in the main event spot. Um, I see him coming on strong like The Rock. Uh, he's very entertaining. He's a very, very, he's very solid in the ring. 
Um, is, is he as good as Chris Benoit? No. But um, he can he can go toe-to-toe with anybody, and he obviously has proved that. Uh, he beat the big show. Um, he obviously uh, uh, tonight could possibly beat Chris Benoit. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, I, I wouldn't doubt within the next eight or ten months he's going to hold the title. And when he does, these fans are going to be behind him, be behind him 100%. He's going to be one of those guys that uh, fortunately is going to step up the you know the business. Uh, uh, people are going to start to get more of an interest in the business like they did The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin and Hulk Hogan. He's got that kind of look. He's got that kind of energy. He's got that kind of athleticism. And uh, John Cena is going to be the next rising superstar in the WWE. Well, his ambition is to be the uh, main event at WrestleMania 20, and we still have a, long, a couple months uh, to find out if that's going to happen. If we can jump back on the phones now, we have, is it Narender? Uh, you're on the phone with Kurt Angle. Yes, it is. Hey, Kurt. How you doing? Pretty good. Um, I'm one of your biggest fans. Of, I, I've totally admired you ever since you came into the WWE. And um, I just had one suggestion or question for you. How would you feel about having um, an Iron Man match between um, you and Chris Benoit at a pay-per-view or, or at a SmackDown event of some sort to elevate, you know, Chris Benoit to the WWE, you know, um, championship level? Well, I'll tell you right now, the way Chris Benoit is going right now, he doesn't need anybody to elevate him. But um, would I love to wrestle Chris Benoit in an Iron Man match? Without a doubt. Um, I just wrestled Brock Lesnar a few months ago in an Iron Man match, and uh, it turned out to be really, really good. I thought it was one of my better matches this year. Uh, Chris Benoit, like I said before, he adds uh, another dimension to it. Um, him and I, uh, we, we, um, we, we meshed together so well with the submission holds and the, the real wrestling. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of people say that, um, you know, we kind of gotten away from wrestling, but when Chris and I get together, we go back to the old school wrestling. As a matter of fact, at the Royal Rumble, if you ever watch, if you've never watched the match, uh, there was only one punch thrown in the whole match, and it was a 30 minute match. Um, you don't see that very often anymore. And uh, uh, I'd love to wrestle Chris Benoit in a one hour Iron Man match. Uh, I think it would be one of the greatest matches of all times, and without a doubt, the greatest Iron Man match of all times. Well, I'd have to say uh, we do have a lot of great competitors on both Raw and SmackDown, but uh, that Iron Man match that you and Brock had was absolutely, uh, it was out of, the, out of the ballpark, in my opinion. Uh, let's jump back on the phone calls real quick again. And Pam, you are on the line now with Kurt Angle. Hello? Pam, you there? Yeah. Hello? 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 You're on there the you phone go. with Kurt Angle. Go ahead, Pam. Do you have a question? Might be a cell phone. Bad connection, guys. Okay, Pam, let's go back to you. were on the phone with Kurt Angle. Yes, you lost you your were. opportunity. He is a sexy man. <laughs> I must say that. Let's go. Let's go to one more email from Dublin, Ireland. Thomas wants to know, Kurt, if your neck injuries force you to retire from in-ring competition, would you consider a role like Steve Austin's, or would you try to leave the industry and move on to something else? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, I don't think I could ever, ever leave the industry. Uh, I love it too much. Um, I put too much time and energy into it, and I have such a passion for it that uh, I think I would do something uh, at any capacity, whether it be a, a you know backstage agent, uh, being on the writing team, uh, and yes, of course, uh, doing something like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Could I carry that role as good as Steve Austin? Probably not, but I'd definitely try to try to carry it as well as him. Uh, obviously, my character is a heck of a lot different, but um, I'm entertaining in a different way. And uh, uh, if, if that, uh, you know, if that comes, you know, if that comes to pass, and I and I do have to retire, I would consider something like that because I really enjoy being on TV. I really enjoy entertaining the fans, and uh, that that would be a lot of fun. But it wouldn't be nearly as fun as wrestling in the ring. I agree. Yeah. And on this paper, it says that tonight the winner of the Cena Benoit face each other with the winner gaining a shot at Lesnar on the same night. It's the first WWE Championship match on SmackDown since the 60-minute Iron Man match between Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar on September 18th. So hey. tonight is kind of like a new tradition. We got yeah. Kurt on the phone. We got these two guys going at it. Cena does have an amazing finish, that FU. I used to use it. It's called the Dreamer Driver, and even I can <laughs> score a pin on a guy. Outstanding. When I hit that move, I even pin someone. I just can't <laughs> pin. I can't pick the guys up. My back hurts. Yeah. But... Hey. And Kurt, how the hell did you hurt I would your get your lawyers together, and I'd go after Cena on that finish move there. I will. Uh, how could you hurt your neck when your neck is so muscular? He doesn't have a neck. 
<laughs> a lot of people say that. I have no idea. I think it has to do with, obviously, uh, when I got thrown on my head and, uh, at the U.S. Open in 1996, uh, that pretty much did it. And from here on in, I've always dealt with the pain, and I just kind of tried to hold out as long as I could before I had surgery. And uh, fortunately, I was able to hold out for seven years. But uh, then it, it just kind of, I, I couldn't do it anymore. So I... Great. I went with the surgery and it worked well up until that chair shot, and then I had to, you know, I had to sit out again. So hopefully this time when I come back, I, I can at least finish out my career uh, in good health and, and walk away from it, uh, and literally be able to walk away from it. That's that's my goal. Next time someone comes at you with a chair, go for an ankle pick, take him right down, <laughs> or throw crash test dreamer's head in there. It'll be good. Great advice anytime. Hey Kurt, I want to ask you one more question. Uh, also, we want to let everybody know that the new SmackDown magazine, uh, which is already out on the stands right now, John Cena is on the cover. There is a big article on... Uh, picture of Kurt Angle in his... Oh, no, that's... Well, no, 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 no. It, it that is was a, Tory. It's, Sorry, it's a, I get your nice guys' article. bodies confused. Nice article on Kurt and uh, calling you the Steel City hero. But uh, I, I want to ask you one more question before we let you go. Uh, did you ever think that you, once you got into this new business of uh, sports entertainment, that you would uh, love it as much as you've, you've come to? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, it's just kind of, uh, you know, every single day I grew to love it even more. When I first started, I, I was excited about it, but I didn't know I was going to have the passion I do now. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the greatest things in the world to be involved in, and uh, uh, I don't regret a single day that I've been in this uh, industry. So. Um, I love it so much that, like I said before, I would continue on at any capacity because I love enjoying the fans and being a part of something so great. And speaking of things you love, how is your wonderful daughter? My daughter just turned a year old last week, and we had a big party for her, and fortunately I was able to be home for it. So uh, this all worked out pretty well for me. Uh, my, my wife and I are real happy. She's actually starting to walk now, and we're, we're actually real excited about it. That's Karen's cool. walking now? Yes. Karen. Yes. You know, well, your wife. I thought you said your wife. He was trying to make a funny. I was trying to make a funny Kurt. It didn't work, but that's okay. Is your daughter suplexing yet? <laughs> yeah. That's all right. No, no, my wife is, though. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Very good. Well, Kurt, we want to thank you very much for being on with us this afternoon. Uh, best of luck to you, and uh, rehab your neck and come back as soon as possible without coming back too soon. I got you. I hear you, Tom. Yeah. Bye, Kurt. Thanks. All right, guys. Thank you very much. We'll see you yeah. soon. Bye. Always a pleasure to talk to Kurt Angle. Here's a guy who was a gold medalist in the Olympics, came into this business and adapted and had a great time doing it and was very successful. And if you think about it, in, when he was training for the Olympics, he broke his neck only once, and here he's broke his neck twice because yes. it proves that our sport is tougher. Yes. I've always said that. Just Thank you very much, fake Tommy. Olympians. You know what? we got some emails for you, Tommy, and I'd like to ask you if you don't mind. What do you got? We, well, we have an email from Mark from Florida. It says, when do you expect to be back on Raw on a regular basis, which we've talked about earlier on Fight This, and uh, do you expect to be involved in a major program with any WWE superstar? If you could choose anyone to have a program with, who well, would it be? Well, since we're talking candidly and sure. no one else is listening yeah, to us, don't worry about I've heard rumors the that there's a big Tommy Dreamer Triple H feud on the uh, horizon of no. the title and me and Evolution, yeah. and I lead the new Evolution because I used to be part of an extreme revolution, I knew, I, and yes. it's this huge program that's just going to put me right over the hump. Yeah? But just don't tell anybody. Don't let it get out there because it. then they'll probably just kibosh it. Because so. the rumor report and rumor control and all that good then stuff. And I get in trouble. All right. Very cool. What about another one? Let's uh, talk about this email. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Tommy, you are the sexiest man in WWE. Give me a lap dance, baby. That's got to be from, yeah, that's boom, that's boom. That's from Josh. That's oh. from, oh, no, 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 no. Josh is down here. Oh. Kurt, I want to lick your toe. Well, no, oh, no, 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 that's okay. Josh. Okay, sorry. Someone keeps calling me sexy and yeah, that's want boom, me boom. to give them a lap dance? No, no, no. Boom, boom emails all the time. Okay. Boom, boom is... Is she cheating on me, is what you're saying? Yeah, I'm trying to say she's loved to cheating on you. Give me a lap dance. dance. I'd yes. probably break her lap. Have you seen that's the size okay. of my ass, boom, boom? No, 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 no. Oh. Let me ask you, we have another email from Lisa from Buffalo. Uh, now that Mick Foley is the co-GM of Raw, do you think WWE should bring back the Hardcore Championship, Tommy? What I do you would think? love it. Uh, that's probably when I would return to uh, Raw on a more steady basis. Yeah. I would love it. I think the Hardcore division is a good division. It adds to Raw, but I'm not a powers that being, but I'm happy with my little spot on heat, and I'm happy with 
showing up on Raw. Hey, I'm talking. Be quiet over there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, this doesn't happen with Phil Spears in God, charge. Phil, where are you? All right. And I'm, I'm happy sorry, when I get to come on Raw every once in a while, and the people never forget about me, and I'm just happy always wrestling. Because a well, good day, any day of wrestling is still a good day, as you would know. So. Well, I, I, I think uh, that nobody can forget you, Tommy, and, and the more visits you do on Bite This and more appearances you do on Bite This as a co-host uh, when Josh can't make just get it. rid of Josh altogether. I, you know, I like that. Uh, I do. when days when you go to OVW, that's when we'll have Josh here. Or why don't you just have like uh, Tori or, or Trish or like... Dude, I hang with a lot of the divas. I could hook us up big time. All right, we, This show needs more implanted oh, boobies. That's what we need. Very nice, man. Let's, let's just go get some... Forget about the divas. Let's just let's do it from a local strip club Let's next. talk about the recent magazines. If you grab that Raw magazine over there because this is the new Raw magazine magazine will be out on the newsstands Bam. tomorrow. Never seen before except live here on the internet. Woo! Correct. Uh, you notice how uh, Kane's on fire. It. He looks evil. He's mad. Very interesting magazines and we talked about earlier the new Smackdown magazine as well. Already out on the newsstands. The big, yes, fold out of Yokozuna choking Bret Hart. God bless him. Yes. Uh, both magazines uh, will be available. 19, wait, wait, hold on, 19. And we're in the year 2003. Yeah. Getting ready to be in the year 2004. Absolutely. I was thinking of 1999. You know, party like it's 1999, Tom. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's about Rob Van Dam's comic book store. Uh, talk about party in 1999. They have what yes. is an amazing, which I could actually get into, a job well done. Actually, it's a very good article. It is phenomenal. I read it yeah. before we went on the show. The Enhancement Hall of Fame. Yes. And, a lot of guys, uh, A lot man. of guys, famous wrestlers. I didn't the make Brooklyn the Hall of Fame, Brawler, but I was sure enhancement. Johnny mm. Rods, my trainer. Yes. A lot of famous people. In Terry it. Gibbs. Did you ever know Terry Gibbs? Yes. I did, too, in Atlanta, Georgia. And, different uh, kind of guy. All really, right. really cool. Yes, sir. Speaking of different kind of guys, and my kind of guy all together, very good friend of mine. I know you know this man well as well, Tommy Rich. Tommy Rich. I'm going to call you Tommy Rich. Okay, the, the I don't care. All right, baby. Wildfire, bring On it up. On the phone right now, my former manager and present co-host, commentator, commissioner, whatever he is, in OVW, James E. Cornette. Jim, good to have you on board. Dr. Tom and Tommy, how are you? I was giving you your old Midnight Express theme music. There you go. Well, you were you were off key just a little bit, but don't worry, because, you know, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I'll never forget, sir. We've been off key for the last 45 minutes, it seems like. Um... Well, well, tell us first of all, let's get right to the uh, meat of the matter if you want to. Let's talk about the tryout camp in March in OVW. A lot of phone calls have been coming my way, emails. Um, everybody wants to know what is going on uh, in the March OVW tryout camp. Well, I will be glad to give you the shameless plug. And as a matter of fact, stand back, boys. I'm fixing to cut a promo. I know yeah. it's not like me to cut a promo on anybody, but I'm going to cut one. I got the first, oh, 125 applications or so. We announced the tryout camp last week, and, and I will say this. It's a, a week-long tryout camp. Uh, I'm going to be there, OVW owner Danny Davis, head trainer. Uh, Dr. Tom will be there, um, you know, to uh, lend his expertise. A lot of the top WWE uh, developmental guys are going to be there to work out with the guys. It's limited to 50 participants. You have to... Go to our website, ovwrestling.com, that's ovwrestling.com, and uh, go to the tryout uh, information and fill out an application, send it in. If you are accepted, then, and only then, uh, should you send the, the $995 for the one-week camp. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity, and the reason I'm going to cut a promo is I got our first uh, batch of applications last night. I'm getting people that are six feet five and 160 pounds. I'm getting people that are five feet seven and 300 pounds. I'm getting people that are 38 or 39 years old and have no uh, high school athletic background, no college athletic background, no mixed martial arts training. And and here I'm sitting here going, you know, there's so many guys in this business that are already professional wrestlers uh, that that want to get a break and they'll drive a thousand miles round trip at their own expense for a five minute dark match on a WWE television taping, but they won't make the commitment to say, okay, I'm going to go for this, and and come into this camp and show what they can do. Now I'm not talking about this 
um, simply to make money because we're going to have 50 people that pay the, the, the tuition fee for the camp, but I want 50 really good prospects. And I'm wondering, where are all the guys out there on the independent scene that have been dying for a chance to have an up-close and personal audition slash training session with uh, WWE and OVW personnel? Where are all these um, mixed martial arts fighters? Where are all these great high school and college uh, athletes that, that are trainable and coachable, that have a track record of staying in shape? We want to find good talent for OVW and good talent for the WWE in the future. And, you know, it, it seems to me like a lot of guys are shortchanging themselves because some of them figure either they've passed that milestone in their career or else well, maybe they're not hearing about it. But um, last year in the camp, out of 50 guys that we had, we invited 12 to continue training in OVW. One of those, Tank Toland, has already gotten a WWE developmental contract. He's only been here six months. Um, a few others are under consideration for contracts, and about eight or nine are currently on television, some in prominent positions um, in, in Ohio Valley Wrestling. And I think a lot of guys uh, wanting to be wrestlers are misinterpreting the correct steps to do it. You don't just come out of an independent, you know, world extreme outlaw Chinese, you know, Cornhusker Wrestling in Lincoln, Nebraska, and go to the WWE. Just like unless you're a phenom, you don't go straight out of high school into professional sports, baseball, basketball, football, whatever. You've got to take an intermediate step. But OVW, over the past four years, has placed 30 guys on the WWE full-time roster. Ten of those who have been signed to contracts began their training at OVW, walked on to OVW, and impressed the officials so much that they were given contracts. I'm not saying... This is the only way to get in the WWE. I'm saying this is probably your best shot at it statistically. And I really want to get out there and, and impress upon people that we're looking for quality athletes. We're looking for talented performers. We're looking for people who even have no wrestling training, but who are coachable and who are in shape and who are ready to come and, and put their game face on and impress people. And I really want the quality of applications this year to be even better than last year because I want to produce talent that OVW can, can work with in the short term and that can prove themselves to the WWE officials in the long term. So I'm inviting everybody out there, put up or shut up. If you think you can do it, this is the time to find out. It's not expensive. We don't take a portion of your money forevermore when you get a job, whether we did it or not. We don't jack you up on OVW tuition, uh, $5,000 I've heard from some of these wrestling schools that teach you how to write a check and nothing else. The program works. There's a track record. And I want people who are qualified to get in this business because it's a talent-driven industry, and we need new talent. I couldn't agree more, Jim. We invite you to call, uh, ask questions for Jim Cornette at one 888 live wwe Let's jump on the phones right now. Nigel, what is your question for Jim Cornette? Uh, hey, Jim. Hey, Dr. Tom and uh, Tommy Dreamer. How are you all doing today? Great. Good. Uh, my question is to you, Jim Cornette. Um, you know, a lot of guys have come from OVW. Of course, John Cena, uh, a big example on SmackDown right now. But uh, these these two big guys, um, Nathan Jones and Matt Morgan, um, yes. have come in from training on OVW. Do you, do you think that they were ready to come on WWE TV? Well, Nathan Jones has spent a little bit of time with us lately training. Obviously, he was signed beforehand um, and then and then sent down here after, I believe, a slight injury or something. He was trying to rehab. So we didn't really train Nathan, but we have, we have you know, been instrumental in his past couple of months of training, and, and I think he's come uh, quite a ways from, from his first appearances in, in WWE. Uh, Matt Morgan has been here from scratch, and Matt Morgan – Barring serious injury, I've said this before, is going to be a major superstar in this business. He's the youngest seven-footer in the sport. He's athletic. He's got a good attitude. I don't know that, you know, see, here's the thing. Who's ready? When are they ready? You never stop learning in this business. So if somebody could be in OVW for 10 years and they would learn things they didn't know, um, I think Matt may have, because of his tremendous, uh, tremendous look, tremendous charisma, and tremendous potential, I think maybe they said, oh, we got to have Matt. I would have loved to have had him for six more months. But Matt's a good kid, and he's on the ball, and I think he's going to take the opportunity he's been given. I think he's going to run with it. 
So I'm really high on Matt Morgan, and uh, I think he just needs to find his proper niche in the WWE. Thank you very much. I, I just didn't want to forget about Brock Lesnar also started from scratch uh, as far as Randy Orton. Uh, Randy Orton. Uh, well, well, Randy Orton had had six professional matches when he came to OVW, all of them in his home in St. Louis. Yeah. Brock Lesnar, I think, had had uh, oh, three or four weeks of training with Brad Ringens up in Minnesota before he came to OVW, but right. he started basically from scratch. Uh, the same thing could be said about uh, Rob Conway. Uh, 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 the Basham brothers, Doug and Danny Basham. Doug Basham is Danny Davis's nephew. Damager was one of our uh, early walk-on students before the WWE developmental deal was, was in place with OVW. And so these guys were homegrown guys from the, from the Louisville area, and, and they have excelled. And you can say the same thing, though, about Rico Constantino. It had 12 pro matches when he came here in 1999. And he was a tremendous, tremendous learner, quick learner. Uh, there's a lot of guys. I don't want to take credit for everybody in the world, but there's a lot of guys that we either broke in, started from scratch, or uh, were instrumental in getting them after they just had the, the bare-bones training. Right. And then I can also talk on the developmental program right now. Johnny Jeter, Chris Cage, Mark Magnus, um, several others came to OVW as walk-ons, joined the amateur class, moved up to the advanced class, and less than two years later, they're on WWE developmental contract. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, toot toot, but I think that Danny and Rip Rogers and myself and all the people that work in OVW and all the support the WWE sends us by sending down agents and guest trainers and superstars rehabbing injuries, it, it's, it's the place to be, truthfully, in my opinion, if you want a career in the WWE, you can do it other ways, but uh, when you look at the, the statistics, um, you've got a much better chance right now being a part of this program. Let me ask you this because, again, I get calls every day from someone who wants to go to OVW, uh, and the problem is there's only so much room and only so much time. So I guess this camp in March... Um, you're going to get the cream of the crop, and you, Danny, Rip, myself, and others will be taking a look at these guys, and it's going to tell the tale. Uh, and you would think this is probably the, the best way to get someone to look at you for a, a serious consideration. You know, well, well and it's, it's up to everybody. We can give the opportunity. The talent, the drive, and the determination is up to the individual, but we can give the opportunity. Uh, you can have the greatest restaurant with the greatest food in the world. If nobody knows you're open for business, you're, you're not going to sell any food. Uh, that could be, uh, you know, any line of work anywhere in the country. We're going to give somebody the opportunity to come and to show what they can do, and if they blow the, uh, the, the scouts away and, and become in the top upper percentile of the camp, then they're going to be invited to return to OVW on a full-time basis, which is the best way for the WWE to see them. Uh, our television show, weekly television show here in Louisville, Lexington, and London, Kentucky, three different markets, goes to the uh, Stanford offices every week. Uh, a lot of people in talent relations, a lot of people on the creative staff watch that show to keep an eye not only on the contract guys, but the non-contract guys, because everybody's looking for talent. And in OVW, we don't discriminate. We don't say, okay... This guy's got a WWE contract, so he's going to be used. He's going to be featured in main event matches. He's going to be catered to. We don't do that. Non-contract, contract guys alike are treated the same way in OVW, and, and I feature as matchmaker, I feature the guys in the big matches that are outperforming the other guys. So everybody's got a fair shot at it, whether they got a contract or not. Then they've got to prove themselves, and a lot of guys have. Well... I agree with you there. I, talking about proving yourself, Tommy, there's uh, a lot of guys I've seen in OVW that have made it to the ranks of uh, WWE and really, really shined. And there's one guy in particular, Jim, that I'd like you to speak about um, who has really done everything possible, everything that's ever been asked of him. Uh, he's making some shots for us, uh, I believe, this weekend and next. Nick Densmore. Tell us, a little, tell us something about Nick Densmore. Nick Densmore was Danny Davis's second student uh, when he opened up OVW as a wrestling school. Uh, Nick's a seven-year veteran. He's been on WWE developmental contract for over four years now. 
He has been the franchise player in OVW for more than that time, almost since he started. And so far, there's not been a place for him. You know, we've had guys come into OVW, get contracts, and be moved up within four to six months. And here's Nick Dinsmore, who has had a large hand in training a lot of them, uh, who is still here four years later. And, and I point that out to the fact that, you know, it, it, it doesn't just take talent. It takes the, the creative staff having the proper spot and the proper uh, image for the guy to project. And uh, Nick's talent is, is undeniable, and he's ready to go. And now he's on the road uh, quite extensively over the next several weekends with uh, live house events. And hopefully the television breakthrough will be momentarily. But, you know, once again, it, it just points out to a lot of people think, oh, we go to school for six months and then we'll be in the WWE. Got news for you. Once you graduate high school and you go to college, then you got to go to law school. And it doesn't happen overnight. But if you start early enough, if you dedicate yourself, by the time that you're in your mid to late 20s, you're going to be in serious consideration if you have what it takes. Right. Um, so, you know, and, and Nick has been a tremendous help, unselfish, training a lot of the guys that came in after him, that went up to the WWE before him, but he's still holding out hope, and uh, he is still keeping himself in shape and constantly trying to improve his game. Because, you know, I, I told somebody the story yesterday. Randy Macho Man Savage in 1985 was the WWF at that time champion and uh, made... A lot of money that year, let's say. The previous year before that, before he signed with the WWF, he was uh, sleeping on a mattress in an apartment on New Circle Road in Lexington, Kentucky, a mattress on the floor because he couldn't afford furniture. You've got to pay your dues in this business. And we will also, at OVW, we will tell a guy, if you're 22 years old and you're really improving and you show a lot of potential, even if you're not making any money, we're going to tell you you owe it to yourself to keep with this and see what's going to happen. Now, if you're 33, then at that point you need to make serious consideration as to whether you want to continue to do this for a living because your window of opportunity is running out. But OVW is a different type of wrestling school than anywhere else in the country. If you come up to us with the money in your hand to join our school, we won't take it unless we believe that you have a chance of succeeding at some level in this profession. We turn away more than we take. It's not all about, uh, fortunately, we're not in a position where we have to subsist solely on that, uh, that money. Uh, it's not about that for us. It's about finding good talent, feeding it to the WWE, uh, making OVW the best it can be, and helping guys who really can make it and have the potential helping them realize their dream of being involved in professional wrestling. We're not a fast food wrestling school, and if you're 5'9 and 165 and 36 years old, we're going to advise you that this is not the career for you. And I don't see that from a lot of other wrestling schools. There are good ones. I'm not going to mention anybody's names because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or leave anybody out. But I know what we do, and, and we don't just run people through for the sake of taking their tuition money and then leaving them sitting with no contacts, no place to get booked, no place to further their career. Very good. Uh, because we're nice guys and friends to furry woodland creatures. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, I know from experience of talking to a lot of the OVW guys, uh, especially like guy like Garrison Cade, who uh, when he was down there, he said he learned a lot. And then when Bradshaw came in for like the two or three weeks when Bradshaw was rehabbing his injury, Yes. He said he taught him so much about etiquette on the road and being with the boys. And, and I think you've done a hell of a job and looking at so much of your talent that is on the Raw side and the SmackDown side each and every week from, you know, Victoria, Jackie Gata, um, Jindrak spent some time down there. It's just, it's... Well, well you know, that, that's another thing, Tommy. To be, to be honest with you, it's, it's a bonus that you can't get anywhere else in the country in that when WWE stars have to rehab injuries or come in to to uh, get themselves back in ring shape after a layoff, they're working out with the, with the developmental guys and also the non-contract guys that are in our advanced class right. who are performing at, at close to the same level, if not the same level. And so Chris Benoit came down and had a heck of a match teaming with Nick Dinsmore and, uh, you know, at, at Six Flags. And Chris Jericho faced Johnny Jeter. Johnny Jeter, here's a kid 21 years old, Two years ago, he packed up his car in San Diego and drove to Louisville to join our amateur class. And he was so good, so quick, 
that we moved him up to the full-time program. And six months ago, he got a developmental deal. And last summer, he was able to work a, uh, a, a singles match at Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom with one of his heroes, Chris Jericho, who was more than happy to do it because he saw a chance to help a kid that was in the position he was in 10 years ago. Right. So, it, it, you know, these guys are, are wrestling and in the ring and being instructed not only by the OVW staff, but on a regular basis by the WWE agents, by some of the top talent. Um, you know, they, they get uh, an advantage that no other wrestling school or pro training program in the country can give them right now. And I think it, it behooves anybody who wants to know, am I going to do this for a career, take the shot, take the chance, see if it's for you, and then if it doesn't work out, that's fine. But if it does, you've had the best training and the best advantages of anybody on the independent scene. Yeah, I have to agree with you. If, if you love the business and you want to be in it for, uh, as you said, a, a chosen profession, uh, it is the only place to go. One more question, Jim, before we let you go. Um, any chance of you writing an autobiography? Uh, well, there, there could be, but the problem is I'm not finished living yet. Yeah. So I don't want to just stop in the middle. I'm going to wait until, you know, I've, I've finished doing everything of any importance, and then maybe I'll write something and tick everybody off. Whoa! I know how, I know how we can get, get away from the OVW camp and get the real Jim Cornette, the Jim Cornette that I loved as a kid. Well, I hated you, but you had the racket and get that fired up Jim Cornette. I know how to get him back right here on the phone. Ready? Yeah. Good. Paul Heyman, what's your opinion? <laughs> Oh! Now, wait a minute. Now, this is the Internet. What kind of language can I use? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just teasing. I, I said this 10 years ago, and it's true to this day. In my opinion, Paul Heyman would rather climb a tree and tell a lie than stand on the ground and tell the truth. But that's just my opinion, and I, I don't want to knock him. anybody. So you didn't hear it from me. That's I love right. you, Jim Cornette. Uh, it's great. Anybody out there that wants to be a part of this, ovwrestling.com is our website. The application form is on o there. Uh, you can mail it in. You can email it. And, uh, you know, then we will go through the applications and we will notify the people that have been accepted and the people that have not been accepted. And uh, we're hoping for a, a field of 50 guys that are ready to go and ready to be the next Steve Austin 10 years from now. Sweet. Very good, Jim. Uh, we thank you very much for coming on this afternoon. Uh, it was a pleasure. And I will be in OVW Monday. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, everybody down there. Beautiful. It's 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 wonderful to have you, and I enjoyed being. Uh, I enjoyed you having me because I enjoyed it being yeah, had. Thank you very Sweet. much. <laughs> He's here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Try the veal. All right, Jim. Take it easy. Thanks a lot, guys. You bet. We'll see you. And usually, you know, you got to have the heart, the desire, everything that Cornette talked about. And if your heart isn't into it, then don't even bother showing up because I was wrestling in ECW for seven eight years and it took me when i came here i started all over again right. it's the whole learning process and it's if you're not your heart ain't into it don't even bother well i think up. the problem last year was a lot of guys uh came with the ideas that there was going to be just just handed to them and and they found out differently and a lot of disappointments uh but tonight on smackdown don't forget watch it yes upn you have chris benoit taking on john cena whose corner will brock lesnar be in tommy dreamer I don't know. I'm going to have to tune in and watch. How about that for a shameless plug? Outstanding. Uh, Raw Monday night, Mick Foley uh, will probably wreak havoc again. I don't know if Eric Bischoff will even show up. But we have Kane what taking on event. Goldberg for the World Heavyweight Championship. Amazing. I'll be there. I don't know what I'll be doing, but I'll be sitting back watching that match next week. Right here wearing a fresh flyest outfit Ooh. of all time Ooh. though she hangs out with stevie richards eh. she's really got her eye on dreamer oh, victoria stinky. live and in the studio josh unfortunately will be here googling and ogling all over her but he's a little jerk and he couldn't stand a chance with the lovely victoria any any chance of you uh, maybe making a surprise appearance next week i was actually thinking of going ovw i need a chance oh. or a shot somewhere so maybe <laughs> i could hook my career back up and uh, Get a shot down there. It sounds like, hey, I got heart. I got desire. Yes, you I'm do. I'm in decent shape. You I'll... turned the lights out in ECW, man. Yeah, I did. Yes, you did. Yeah. Very good. How much more time we have? We have a lot of time. We have a lot of oh, time, man. Seconds. Here you go. Tommy, Dr. thank you Tom. very much for joining us Internet, this week. Internet, we love you. Very good. Next week, it'll be Victoria and Josh. Looking forward to seeing you guys in about, what, three weeks? See you later. <laughs>